Hello, this is Sydney Tyndall for Galvanize, and I am here with CBS Sacramento Sports Director, Marshall Harris. Marshall, thank you so much for joining us and for being part of our Who Not Do series. I'm so excited for this, so let's jump in. I'm excited too, thanks for having me. I've heard you talk about helping others throughout your career and paying forward to others in the industry, not just as you got older, but you've been doing it your whole career. Why is it so important so early? I think, you know, the old proverb, each one teach one, um, you know, go back even further. Uh, you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. You teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Th those are important things. Um, everyone doesn't have as great a setup as I had. I mean, I'm fortunate in that um, I was able to go to school, Starkville representing Mississippi State. Uh, on a full academic scholarship. So like I didn't have student debt. Um, I worked while I was in school and all my work was towards building my career because I could, um, whereas other people don't have those options. Um, you know, somebody that we both know, Laura Open, when I was a junior in college, I interned at um, a station that no longer exists in the same form. And it was a joint partnership between CNN and Sports Illustrated um, at the CNN Center. And I interned there and I actually, I ran teleprompter for Laura Oakman on the weekends. And uh, I worked from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Didn't do much for my social life, but I wouldn't tr have <laughs> traded in for anything in the world. And she helped me by like answering any question I had. Uh, and at the end of my internship, she got me on the set where she was doing her, her thing to do like a mock run of like doing the sports, which was so cool. And I was so terrible, but she, she worked with me on it and it was great. And I think the thing that I remember the most about that entire internship is she, she told me, she was like, Marshall, two things. One, enjoy the journey. Like we all have goals and dreams and things that we want to do. Like back then my job, my dream job was I wanted to work at ESPN and I wanted to host baseball tonight, which doesn't even exist in the form it existed way back when. And she was like, but enjoy the journey. And I didn't really understand at the time what she meant by that, but she meant like enjoy like every market that you work in on the way to where you think you want to be. And I can say I had so much fun in all those stops and I enjoyed it even much more because of that. But she also told me, you know, this business is really tough um, because back then, this is back in, you know, 2000, this is 20 years ago, 21 years ago. Um, she was like, it's really tough for minorities and women specifically. So if you ever have a situation where you can help someone who's either a woman or someone who's um, a minority, do everything you can to help them and empower them and make them believe that they can do this. Like I'm telling you right now, because she believed in me. She's like, you definitely have a future in this business. You can do this. I, I, I know you don't think you did well in your, your mock run, your mock like audition style tape, but you did. Um, there's so much potential there. And I took that to heart and I carried that message wherever I go. And I always, um, my dream job before I wanted to host baseball tonight even was to be a play-by-play -play, um, man for a college university and work as faculty, as a teacher and be an internship coordinator. Cause I loved internships. I did, mm -hmm. I was always interning somewhere. I did like, I think 10 internships while I was in college. Like, People think like an internship is like this big deal, but like I'd have an internship at a TV station where I'd work two days a week and an internship at a radio station where I might work three or four days a week. And like, they weren't like, like 10 hours a week doesn't sound like a lot, but you, you can learn a lot in 10 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And I was always doing stuff like that. And so I loved the opportunity to help teach, um, grow people, watch them succeed. And it's something I always did at my last job, NBC Sports Philadelphia, we had a lot of interns. And I would always talk to the interns, like, if you have any questions, come and talk to me. I, I would love to share. And they did. And so Laura Oatman's words about, you know, helping whoever I could, I always made sure to take extra care um, with everyone, um, no matter their background, but especially if it was um, someone uh, who was minority or a woman and let them know, like, yo, there's people out here who, who want to make sure you succeed. Don't feel like the world's against you. Because you got to do, especially as a woman, you have to deal with so much just crap 
that men don't have to deal with. Like I recognize, like we live in a misogynistic society, we live in a patriarchal society, and I try at every turn to like squash that. Um, so it, it, it can be tough, but I think we've made a lot of progress, not enough, but a lot of progress in the last 20 years. And that progress has been exponential. And then I think there's been more progress in maybe the last five years than the previous 15. I think about my uncle, Stuart Scott, so often, who I know you had a great mentorship and friendship with. And I think about what advice he would give me as I begin my journey in this industry. What's the one piece of advice you have for me that you know he'd love you giving me? Well, you know, it's funny because uh, because of Laura, that's how I met Stu. Mm -hmm. um, my first uh, National Association of Black Journalists convention, I told Laura I was going and she was like, hey, Stu's going to be there. You got to talk to him for me. I want you to go up to him. I want you to give him a big hug and a kiss and say it's from Laura and he'll take care of you because you know me. I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They had the same agent at the time, um, Jackie Harris. And I went and I, I saw Stu and like, he was like celebrity, like everybody wanted to talk to him, get pictures with him, whatever. So I waited and finally like, so he was done talking to somebody and I, I slipped in there and was like, hey, Mr. Scott, um, I was told to give you a big hug and a kiss, but I don't know you like that. So I'm just gonna give you a firm handshake and introduce myself. And he was like, big hug and a kiss. Who told you to give me a big hug and a kiss? It was like, Laura Oatman. She, she claims she knows you. I don't know how well she knows you, but this is what she wanted me to do. And he just busted out laughing. And immediately he was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Laura told me about you. I'm, I'm so glad to meet you. Um, I, want, I got somebody I want you to meet. And he introduces me to his agent. I talked to his agent for about an hour. Talked to Stu for about an hour. She's like, I got this, this other guy I want you to meet. His name's Kevin Frazier. Um, he'll be here later on today. Kevin Frazier gets there. He walks up and he's like, oh, this is Marshall. Apparently they, they knew who I was. I, I was like <laughs> taken aback. Laura had really put in the good word for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I go sit down in a corner with Kevin for about two hours and we're just talking about everything. He tells me about how he got his start in the business, how he got to where he was. I tell him about like what I had done, where I was trying to go. What I, and he was just completely engaged, as was Stu. And I just, I picked up two mentors who I wouldn't be where I was if they hadn't instilled like a certain confidence, level of brotherhood, big brotherhood, all of that. And the biggest thing I could tell you about Stu, which you can take with you, maybe what he told me is he was like, look, man, people, everyone's not going to like you. You only need it. Cause he told me about how people didn't like him. Like, People told him he would never work in this business. And he's like, just stay with it. All it takes is one person to give you a chance. And I was just so enthralled by his level of confidence. You gotta be confident and you gotta have thick skin and you gotta just go do what's best for you. Get your mentors and, 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 and keep them up to speed on everything going on in your life, whether it seems like it's minute, small, let them know what's going on with you so they can be there for you. I always tell people, don't get one mentor. Get a handful of mentors. Why have one aunt or uncle when you can have a whole legion of aunts and uncles who want to see you do well in life and that you can lean on? And some may be better in some areas than others. And they all have different experiences. And those shared experiences are going to show you a path to how you can get where you want to go. And I think that's the biggest thing that Stu would have me tell you as you are on your journey is that the more people that you can get involved and you know it takes a village so build your village accordingly and people want to see people succeed as many haters as there are out there there are so many more people who want to uplift you and be like yo i helped her or i helped him get to where he is i'm so proud of them people want to be genuinely proud of the things that you're doing because it carries on their legacy and the mm -hmm. legacy of people before them. Like if you do well, that's not just you doing well for Laura and other people, it's doing well for Stu who's no longer with us. But, you know, do it for the ancestors is a thing. Like people made sacrifices and went through pains so that maybe you didn't have to go through as much to get to where you need to go to. Thank you so much, Marshall, for being part 
of our Who Not Do series. It was a pleasure getting to learn more about you. So thank you for taking the time to do this.